What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbits Used Cars. You know, I get asked literally 10 times a week, I want to get in the car business. What's the best type of car business to get into? It kind of makes you money. That's the first thing that pops in my head. There are so many ways to make money in the car business, and that's such an open-ended question that can go in numerous directions. I'm sitting in a dealer's class because the state of South Carolina thought I needed a redo on some dealer's license stuff. I sat a class for eight hours, and keep in mind, this is a class with people from all over the state, different levels of car sales. We got guys that, like me, they are lifers, and then you got guys that are just getting started, and you know, you got buy here, pay here guys, and which I was the only classic car guy there, but you know, we had a guy that sold some some entry level exotics down at the beach. He was there, and we had guys that were selling just dirt lock used cars and that was the majority of it and we had a couple guys from new car dealerships and whatnot getting this extended training and it, it kind of opened my eyes because you gotta understand i've been out of the dirt lot the buy here pay here the nitty-gritty of sales new car sales in general i mean literally i just sold a man a forty thousand dollar car in 10 minutes over a phone call so my sales life has gotten a lot easier. Keep in mind back when I was working in the dirt lot, to make a $40,000 sale, I had to sell two-thirds of the cars that were on the damn lot to do that. It's a different ball game now. But I get asked that all the time. Like, you know, that doesn't help me. How do I get into that? You know, and, and, and I tell people this all the time. I look at sales and being a salesman, and there's a difference, being a salesman. Not being a flipper, not being, you know, I lucked out and sold one. No, you're a salesman. And that is a trade. And just like a welder is a trade or a man that's a plumber or a carpenter or whatever, it's a trade. And I use this example a lot to people. So you get a guy comes in the dealership and he wants to trade in his car. And you'll say, hey, I can only give you this much for your car. Because obviously you need to get his car at an amount that you can sell it and profit from it. But you also need to make him feel like he's getting enough for his car to make it worth trading it in. Well, I don't want to trade it in because I can sell it myself. I can sell it myself and get more. And yes, you can. So that's what I go at people when they say, hey, well, I can sell it myself. Well, that's a trade. So... What do you do for a living? I'm a plumber. Well, you know, so you're going to stop your job plumbing, laying pipe, putting in toilets, whatever you do, sinks, whatnot. You're going to stop that to detail your car, clean up your car, take those perfect pictures. You're going to put it online and you're going to have everybody and their brother constantly send you dumb messages, wanting an extra picture. I want to hear it run and... Can you give me a run video? Can you do this? Can you do that? And then they're going to want to come and test drive it. Well, how about if it's a ten, twelve thousand dollars car and I offered you, you know, eight thousand dollars for it? Well, then, hey, well, I don't have the money. Can you drive it to my bank? So you're having to stop what you're doing now to go to the bank. So, but you know, you got all these people doing all these extra steps, you know, to sell this car. And yeah, you know what? You may mess around and sell it for ten or eleven grand. But keep in mind, you probably lost a couple of grand and then in time waiting, or you could have just sold it to me and been done with it. And that's kind of a convenience thing, obviously. You know, it's just like buying a gallon of milk from the gas station versus the grocery store. You got to understand that's what a salesman does. That's a trade. We're good at what we do. So we sell cars. We take those stupid calls. We make videos where the car's running. We handle financing. We handle all that. You know what we don't handle? We don't handle toilets. You know why? Because we're not plumbers. And so you push that point, and most of the time you close your trade deal. That being said, there's a lot of weight in that. And so people ask me all the time, what's the best way to get in the car business? You know, I want to get in the car business. And I always say start small. And I say that to everybody because you need to get your feet wet before you just jump right in. Because it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the thin skin. And it's definitely not for the broke. That's for sure. Even cheap cars can get expensive. And I can get into that. This is the thing you got to understand. You need to do your research. And the thing is, you got to think, when I got in the car business, the internet was literally just for porn. 
So there was no such thing as research. Now you got this thing called Google. It can tell you anything and porn. Let's say you've got a question. You know, you're looking at like what car sells. Do a little homework. What kind of car lots are around you? What are they selling? Well, you know what? Commercial vehicles sell good. And especially in this economy, you've got so many people because of the damn pandemic, you know, have went out and the entrepreneur thing has gone through the roof. And entrepreneur now and entrepreneur back when I was getting started are two totally different things. Entrepreneur when I was getting started means I had no job. Now entrepreneur means I'm actually bettering myself, which I love. That's one of those things. You got people that are starting all types of business, you know, a drywall business or being an electrician or a computer repair or a camera guy. Remember that. Anything. You know what I'm saying? Like anything. I mean, you got all these people starting these businesses. Well, you know what? They got to have trucks. They got to have vans. And that's something that I tell people about. Remember stripper car flipper. You know what I mean? There's so much good money to be made in commercial sales. Is it glamorous selling white date rape vans? No. Does it make good money? Yes. Moving on. What about buy here, pay here? Buy here, pay here is great. There's a joke that goes with buy here, pay here. It actually got said like three damn times in this stupid class I was in. What's the fastest way to make a million dollars in buy here, pay here? Start with two million. Funny, the same joke goes with racing. This is the thing with buy here, pay here. You've got to have an incredible amount of backing to make buy here, pay here profitable. I did buy here, pay here. and I'm going to tell you something. I made okay money at it, but I didn't have the money to finance it like I needed to. You got to understand when you do buy here, pay here, you're not floating the note on a couple cars. You're floating to make money floating note on a couple cars. You're going to starve to death. You've got to float the note on hundreds of cars before you start making money. I mean, you know, this is the thing I understand. There's a lot of people that make good money, $20 at a time, just like my merch guy that sells t-shirts. Perfect example of that. But this is the thing. He's selling a product that he can make a good profit off of for 20 bucks and ship it out. Okay. Well, that's fine. Making your money $20 at a time. Just like my, I got a good friend of mine that has a big flea market. And he's a multimillionaire and he makes it $10 at a time renting tables at this flea market every weekend. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the, what those tables aren't eating anything. Those tables, once they're there, they're there. Those spots don't go away. You know, you ain't got to, you know, put a new alternator on those spots. You ain't got to put a fresh set of tires on those spots. You don't have to do anything with those spots. There's nothing wrong with small increments coming in when it's a business like that. This is the problem with buy here, pay here. You know, well, there's numerous problems and I will proceed into that too. But this is the problem with buy here, pay here. The key is you got people that don't have the credit to finance or the cash to buy a car outright. So they have to go through a B lender. Well, guess who that B lender is? That's you. Not only are you the salesman, you're the bank and you're the repo agent. Now, you can sub the repo and thing out, which I highly recommend, because the way the laws, especially in your state, differ from end to end, that's a very touchy subject. Yeah, by rights, you do own the car, but it's kind of like a rental house. You know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of stipulations to it. Just because somebody don't, didn't pay the rent doesn't mean you can throw them out. Same thing goes for repossessing cars, because technically, if it's on their property, they still own it. Possession is nine-tenths. That's a problem. Throw that out of the equation, moving on. Now you've got, you're selling cars to somebody, so the key to buy here, pay here, is obviously taking a car that you've done the research on that you know are good running cars because I want to tell you something about buy here, pay here. Another stipulation with buy here, pay here. When the car stops, the payments do. So you definitely want good, reliable cars, just like I told in a previous video about loving Escort ZX2s. You know why? Because they were like a rubber ball. You could not break them. That's why I like them. Four Tauruses. Things that make good rental cars make great buy here, pay here cars. That's the thing you got to understand for buy here, pay here. Because when that car stops, usually the money's going to be cut off and you're going to go get your broke car. You know, so this is the key, but buying those cars at the right price to where you can get your down payment to where you get some of your investment back, or at least a lot of it back, not all of it. It doesn't work like that. You get that back to roll that back in. Well, this is the only problem when you're getting your money $75 a week or you know, $150 a month, bi-weekly payments or whatever. By doing that, 
when you're only making three hundred dollars a month off a car, and you've got five cars out, you're not really setting the woods on fire, and you got to eat too. But now, if you had a hundred cars on the books, well, now you're bankrolling. You can afford to take a little money out. But starting out, that's the reason I preach to people all the time. Yeah, buy here, pay here is lucrative, but you've got to have the money to back it up. You don't want to go go out and start buy here, pay here car lot with five cars. You want to start a buy here, pay here with 50 cars or 20 cars and roll that 20 into 30 cars. You always want to keep cars on the books and, and just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. And that's how you make your money in buy here, pay here. Putting your money in and like I sold that car so I get my money. No, you don't get a take out of that. You got to roll that money back in and buy more cars. And you got to constantly be buying cars, constantly buy, but you also got to constantly be keeping up with your payments, which luckily, you know, technology has made that a lot easier. Back then, we used to take checks, which was a nightmare in itself. But now, you know, you can pay PayPal and Cash App and whatever and debit cards and all that. But now you got transaction fees and all that is also eating out of your money. Think about that. You know, and also you got to worry about them keeping insurance on them. You got, there's so many headaches with buy here, pay here. I don't want to deter anyone from making money, but I'd just love to throw out the, th the signs that you need to look for and the things you need to think about before stepping into this realm. And another thing about buy here, pay here is usually the ones that are making the most money in buy here, pay here are the most established. It also works the same way in racing. If you'll ever notice, the guys with the most money always had the fastest cars because they got the most money to put in them. Just like the car lot, the buyer payer car lots, they got 200 cars on a lot. We finance anybody, all this stuff. Well, because they have the most money. Well, this is the problem with buyer pay here now is all the little small independents like back in the day. If you're not established, you've got companies like American Car Center, Drive Time, all these big chain franchise, JD Buy Rider, that literally are eating up buy here, pay here market because they see an opportunity there. And they've stepped in, and it's now buyer payers turn corporate. And I mean, these guys have millions of dollars to spend, and they're going to be able to pay more for cars and just finance things that you just can't afford to do. Their, their down payments are obviously going to be way lower. So that's putting your neck out even further on an unsecured or high risk loan, which is basically what a buyer payer deed is or note or whatever you want to call it that's why i always steer people by here pay here I, I i want you to know the facts of it yes it can be good but understand it's one it's not fast money and two given your area and where you're at you're not gonna be able to compete with these guys so keep that in mind moving on to the other things well i want to get into collector car sales well i want to show you right now that is not a cheap way to get in the collector car hobby you know, you gotta understand, you don't go to an auction and buy collector cars. And I said, well, they have auctions all the time. Barrett Jackson and Meekum and all this stuff. I won't fill you in about those auctions. There's nothing to do with collector car sales and Barrett Jackson or Meekum. I love Dana. I love Craig. I know them both. But I will be the first to tell you, any dealers that are there are buying strictly for the case that they want that car. You're not going to an auction looking for a good deal at a classic car auction. Going to an auction looking for a good deal on a classic car, as a rule, it's kind of like buying a damn 747 for the peanuts. It makes no sense whatsoever. You got to think about it. You got over restored cars in a very, very, very inflated atmosphere. You got beer flowing. You got cute girls walking around. This is a lifestyle thing. And unless you're a rapper or a country music sensation or you got a bankroll, you need to stick to watching this on TV. I don't buy collector cars that I sell at auctions. I buy collector cars from individuals. I buy them from builders. I buy them from, you know, different places, but not places like that. So that's another thing. And this is also a very cash driven business. That's another thing to think about by having your capital or your backing. You got to understand, you know, when these people want to sell these cars, they want to sell them to the point to where you can make money off of them. It's not like, well, let me see if I can get my money together and I'll be in touch. No, you got to be there ready to buy at any given time, whether it's a $15,000 car, a $20,000 car, $30,000 car, hell, a damn $100,000 car. You got to be able to buy. So when you jump on that line, you start working that deal, you got to move quick. You know, the thing is, those good deals, 
well, let me see if I can get my money together and I'll be in touch with you. It don't work like that. You buy on the spot. Just like I had a man come pulling up with a nice C10 truck today. I said, hey, that's a good looking truck. He said, yeah, I like it. I've never drive it. I said, you want to sell it? He said, I never really thought about it. He goes, eh, let me think about it. I may even sell it to you one day. We got to talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Got just shoot the bull. I walked around, turn around, I said, I'd give 25 for that truck. He goes, really? I said, yes, sir. I said, ride down cash money. He goes, pay me. And I bought it. Literally. That's how it works in Kledger cars. Boom, shock. You know what? He got a fair price for what he thought about it. And I got a price, I got it for a price that I know that I can make money off of it. Because I know this market, I know these cars. That's when it goes with that. So, you know, when I talk to people about the flips and things like that, people ask me all the time, well, what's the best cars to buy for the least amount and all that stuff? It depends on where you're at. There's so many questions. I could talk for hours on this subject. But, and I'm sure we'll end up shooting another video. But I think this was a good PSA, you know, to flip or not. You know, if you're ready to jump in, you know, do your homework. You know, don't be scared to take a chance, but don't go crazy, especially right out of the gate. You know what I'm saying? Feel it out. You know, you may have to try a couple different things. You know, go to, we, there's a tons of open auctions now that are open to the public. Go to those, fill them out. Don't be the first to buy a car there. Just hang out, see what other people do, see what they're buying, see what they're selling for. You know, look at the cars and then look to see what they're bringing on Marketplace or eBay or wherever. And then be like, man, I can make some money. So the next time you go to the auction, you got an idea of what it's going to bring. Next thing you know, boom. Just that easy. You're making money. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. Right, brother. brother. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen here. This is the Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, brother. Yeah. <laughs> See, I could have been a wrestler. Other than the lack of muscle and athletic ability, I've got that shit down. <laughs> You know, I get asked literally 10 times a week, literally 10 times a week. I'm just watching the most epic <laughs> selfie ever. Teach me how to be a criminal and sell cars. Love it. <laughs>